going yeah. live right now. We live. Okay. There we go. Peace exactly. to the family. We are yeah. live. Right. My man, Liquid Kiddash. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Introduce yourself, my brother. Gabriel. Gabriel Here we go. Brown. The angel Gabriel. Yeah, he definitely sir. is. Trust me. Mr. Gray. Mr. Gray. Tank. Okay, yes, okay. Sir. Well, you know, we call Coming him Tank. Out. Coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gray, you know, you know. Uh, dream catcher, Mr. Gray. Was the dude that was inculcating those themes in that man's consciousness, mm. Mr. Great and the dream catcher. Okay, Might have be an okay. extraterrestrial, but yeah, we here, we here. That's another conversation. <laughs> I'm with my baby girl, my beautiful baby girl. She's here, whatever the knowledge is at, she got to be at the table. And then there we go, there goes my God right there. Boom, you know, people always say, Why you say the black woman, God? Why you say this, that? A God is a man, God is a neuter now. So let's just be real, it could be male or female. And if women got the right, like I told you earlier today, baby, when I was talking to you, I was telling you that I gotta do a post from some of my detractors. Cause I'm like, if the women could wake up, if the women could say, oh, I woke up, Jesus woke me up, Jesus is the only man in my life, and it sounds so intimate. I like to sound intimate with my creator too. You know what I'm saying? So, so, you know, it stands to reason that they could petition to have uh, same-sex marriages. I could petition to have uh, deities opposite to my gender that I embrace as well. You know, but that's 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 uh, light rhetoric. I'm very serious about what I'm saying, but ultimately, I just employ thought provocation to just make people expand their thoughts and perspective. You know, um, and the day that a child is born and they know any of these scriptures inside out without man's teaching or without man inundating them with information, mm -hmm. then I'll be sold. Until then, I got the right to my views and perspectives like everybody else. And you know, that exchange is what's more valuable and that exchange is what's divine. You know, so mm -hmm. long as we stay consistent with logic and appreciation for other people's ideals, I think it works out better that way. But we hit, <clears throat> and I forgot what I named this joint. What did I name this? What's this called? What's this called? Uh, uh, nah, this one, this one is basically, oh, I'm too smart to be broke. Okay. Materialized, that's one of my sayings, I'm too smart to be broke. And when I say that, I want you to say that. You're incredibly and way too smart to be broke. You know, if you made it to the stream right now, <clears throat> it just tells you that there's signs of life, you know, on planet Earth. And you have no business being broken. You have to commission yourself in that capacity. You have to tell yourself, I have no business living like this. If you're discontent with the way you're living, you know? I have no business living like this with a jacuzzi here in different rooms. I should be in a bigger room as far as I'm concerned. And the only way that works for me is if I position myself in such a way to be around other people that succeed. And so sometimes people say, if you're the smartest person in the room, you should get out. And it sounds a little condescending, but I understand it, right? But I always say, if you're the poorest person in the room, you should get out, mm. right? It would, you know, or oh, pardon me, let's put it this way. <clears throat> if you're, pardon me, if you're the richest person in the room, you should get out. Let me say it like that. That's, the, that's my saying. So you have, if you're the smartest person in the room, you should get out. I say, if you are the richest person in the room, you need to get out. Yeah. You yeah, feel me? Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because what are you doing there? Where's the challenge? Mm -hmm. I like to be around people that are doing remarkable things. Like one of one of my uh, billionaire friends, uh, Gatsby. You know, um, he's come back one day from Dubai, so I could come through and check out his Bugatti. He's one in three in the world. One in three in the world. And you know, they give you a toy model in preparation and in anticipation of it coming in. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, that's just new information. I'm like, okay, wow. You know. Uh, another one, James Zukin, he's the, uh, he has the second biggest private investment bank in the world, Hulahan Loki, right? And, um, you know, he gave me an invite to go on this island, which is next door to Bill Gates Island. You feel me? So, when I came back, when I'm on my vibe after building with him, and we just build on metaphysics. When I come back from that vibe, and I, do, I teach a class, and they like, talk to me about real estate, I'm like, yeah, I want an island. <laughs> they like you on an island, right. and they, you know. <laughs> but I realized, oh man, my conversation different because yeah. I just found out I could get one for like two and a half million or lesser, and they make them from sand and reeds from mm. the water, and I can really assert myself geographically on a socio political level as sovereign. Mm. Why? Because no one has ownership of land that is erected from the seas. All land that it actually exists right now belongs to somebody. You, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if I have land erected out of the water, 
that actually is mine at that particular point. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested in that because then we can wow. find people who have skill sets and trades in our community and we can import and export from that land. I don't care if it's a special banana. If we create a new banana, a hybrid banana, it doesn't matter. So long as we engineer something that's unique, that's mm-hmm. of interest to the rest of the world, and we can leverage that for security or for some technological advancement, or maybe we have the technological advancement, it depends. But I mean, well, that's forward thinking. I'm interested in that thinking. And I realized I was in circles that I have no business listening to that thinking because it was like, nah, that's way above our pay grade. That's way above the way I think. And <clears throat> this is the way I think because if I, if I aim for the sun, at the very least, I get the stars. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I'm already out of earth. You feel me? So people talk about at least get a high school diploma. So you set your child to fail when you say that. You feel mm-hmm. me? If I tell you at least get a high school diploma, you come up short of that at least, then what did you mm-hmm. accomplish? But that's us in the community. We don't say at least get a, a college degree, yeah. you know? Or they'll tell us go to university. And then I'm like, when did the university teach you about the universe? When did you go to university and teach about ontology? Most people don't know what ontology is. It's a study of the universe. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> these words is very weird. You feel me? And then you go to school, and not that I'm praising school, but I do know we need to go to school on certain occasions. Especially when it comes to things that we're limited in or we need credentials for. Right. You know, but business administration, I'm like, stop wasting your time. You know, you don't want to work in a Kinko's in old $20,000 student loan. So, and you can't get a refund off these things, right? So, you never can say, hey, I'm going back to school and get a refund because they sold me on a dream. But my thing is in school, is you always chime in when you want. You're supposed to get prepared to become an adult. That's that's the concept of school. Mm-hmm. Be prepared to be an adult. That's what this is about. And so how do we prepare adults? Or how do we prepare somebody for adulthood? Food, clothing, and shelter. That's it. That's what we need to be adults. Yeah. Food, clothing, yeah. and shelter. So watch this. <clears throat> so watch this. To become adults, we have to learn. Oh, that was dope. You stepped on that. <laughs> that was cool. I didn't even know that. But to become adults or prepare one for adults, you have to know food program itself, how to get out of So I say, okay, great. So we go to school, we get SAT math, which is dope. I love that. That's my favorite math. Which is weird because the whole time in school you get told, what's this thing called? A process of elimination. Yeah. Pick A, B, C, or D. Just right. pick something before you get it wrong. Multiple but choice. Multiple right. choice. Yeah. <laughs> Which is in life. In life, you shouldn't take guesses. But right. we learn throughout school, take the guess. Mm-hmm. Then we take the SAT and they say, oh, you know, if you get more points if you don't give an answer, if you don't know the answer. Yeah. Then for you to put the answer and get it wrong. Get it wrong. Now that's real life. Right. You feel me? But yeah. the whole school yeah. career is mm-hmm. predicated upon process elimination. Yeah. Right. Then you take the most important test ever and they flip the whole script. Yeah. Oh no, if you, no guessing. You either know or you don't know. Yeah. It's best that you yeah. don't give the answer. So I say all of this to say, let's go back to school preparing you to, for adulthood, which should be food, clothing, and shelter. Those are three elements you need in order to thrive. But how many of us left school and know how to crochet or stuff? Was there even sewing machines in school? I, I ain't had them. So, okay, <laughs> we're going to eliminate clothing. Because yeah, yeah. we're going to eliminate clothing, but we know that ain't it. All right, and then so we're going to go to food. We may have home ec class and learn how to make a pizza, and they gave us milk, right, which has 750,000 somatic cells, a euphemism for pus, and 24,000 live bacteria before the Food and Drug Administration takes it off the shelf and condemns it. Or it's pasteurized, a process in which they use radiation to prolong the shelf life of the food, which in turn encourages stress on the body in the form of cancer because of the radiation. More radiation in the milk than your cell phone. So, yeah. we're looking at radiated plus. But hey, at the, uh, in home ec, yeah. that was one of the ingredients. Yeah. Why not? And then the white flour. We know white flour, white salt, white sugar, white, I don't even say white people, but we understand the elements of everything that comes white. Mm-hmm. It's not actually the healthiest or most alkaline or alkaline at all when you go on a potential hydrogen scale. Outside of the pizza, what did we learn? And when the heck did we get home at? Because we certainly got home at way after the time we were able to use the stove. That was as far as that went. We didn't learn about holistic health. We didn't learn about health in general. We didn't learn about nothing else other than how to make a little pizza and we probably baked a muffin. And that was all she wrote. That's not dinner. So, ex food out of the situation. So, clothing and food is out as adults. Now, did we learn anything about the deeding process? 
Did we learn anything about the Uniform Commercial Code? Did we learn anything about security agreements? Did we learn anything about credit during the course of school? So now what we're looking at when we graduate, and I'm 18 years old, maybe 17, maybe 19, depending on the situation at best. I graduate, I'm an adult. The only thing that I can do is go to a banking institution and have them educate me upon request of the property. And they are the ones. Look, the two people we have to rely on as adults when we graduate from school are the two institutions known world over for putting people in debt, particularly in America. School and banks. Because I'm a, you know, I got further my knowledge because I'm an adult and I still don't got none of the playing cards to be an adult. I gotta go to school. $20,000, $30,000 debt. I need to get me a home. Hey, the bank is working hard to make sure you get approved for this loan. They'll even enhance your credit for you, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> and so who's going to loan you $400,000 respectively or put you in a $400,000 debt just to live in the hood? Who ain't up to something? But we know it's a subprime and we know that now since they got sureties in place, mm. they can do the payouts and in fact, you'll get paid quicker if I go into default than if I pay this loan at its maturation for 30 years. Yeah. So if you knew you could get paid quicker if I can't pay you, as opposed to if you could pay me, then I'm gonna create a situation where you can't pay me because I'm gonna get paid quicker. Right. Right. <clears throat> and we know that that was just by way of mortgage-backed securities. We know that the prisoners is in there working for free and the Correction Corporation of America is the one Make it, have you sign the bid bond, payment bond, and performance bond, and then consolidate those three bonds to make it an MBS or mortgage backed security. You do that also for the soldiers at war. Your debt to society that you're paying off when you're in prison is people's flaws and devils to pay their mortgage. So we see a direct correlation between foreclosures and prison incarceration because privatized prisons have to have a quota of 9 out of 10 cells built up. It's real ugly. Yeah. But the whole scheme of all of this family is food, clothing, and shelter is what you need to be an adult, and food, clothing, and shelter has not been addressed, but for some reason, yeah. we had eight or nine different periods of class, yeah. 40, 45 minutes each. We carried the one, we did long division, we used calculators, we got free time in gym, you feel what I'm saying? In art class, we might have drew an apple, and we might have shaded it in three different ways, and then used our thumb to make it look three-dimensional. Yeah. And in music class, we couldn't touch the instruments, but we certainly learned the names of different composers. Yeah. So, <laughs> the biggest fraud, <laughs> the biggest fraud is the educational system. You feel what I'm saying? Which Rockefeller's really uh, instigated what we call the educational system today, and that's what due purpose. The biggest fraud being perpetrated against human beings is education, the educational system, or the edited dictation system, mm -hmm. because nothing's really taking place the whole time, all these years. Yeah. Nothing's actually taking place. It's like, you are not prepared to be an adult. Again, you know nothing about deed and security agreements, UCC, credit cards, uh, credit in general. You know absolutely nothing. And you come out and the only thing you know what people do when they got yeah. their free time between high school and college, they'd be like, after two, three years of saying, damn man, I'm, about, I'm, man, I'm in my 20s now. You know what they do? I want to go back to school. <laughs> yeah. As if school didn't already prepare you. Mm -hmm. Let me go back in there because something's on me. The, the onus is on me. I did something wrong mm -hmm. the first 14 years of my school career. Pre-K to 12th grade is 14, 14 years. years. And in there you learn nothing how to thrive in society. The only thing you learned how to do after that was to do it like everybody else and entrust the people that's going to put you in debt to educate you on demand in real time. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, how should I get this house? And the banker tells you, oh, you know, this is what you gotta do here. It's like, excuse me, you just went to the seller for the knowledge of the drug? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. And then we go deeper and we know America is one of two countries in the world that actually solicits medication on TV. It's normal to us, because we see this every day. But when you go around the world, you realize it's against the law to solicit medication. Pharmaceutical companies can't be in competition with each other for the people because it compromises the integrity of the product. Hmm. But hmm. to us, it's normal. Hmm. But you go around the world, you will not see may cause nausea, pain for erection, dry mouth. You want to, even death. Like, hold on. I'm trying to cure a fucking yeah. headache. Pardon my language. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to cure a headache and it may cause death. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. 
Right. Nowhere on planet Earth other than this country and one other country do they allow people to solicit the sale of medication. Mm -hmm. Which, when we get to other conversations, we understand how the medication use can also affect your credit. And another mm -hmm. conversation, yeah. you know, thanks yeah. to my brother here. So, <clears throat> I just want to see what y'all got to say about it as far as this cycle or this matrix is concerned. Because that's just the rollout. Because I said I'm too smart to be broke. And what I meant by that is, after we see the system for what it is, now I know why we've been broke. <clears throat> because for 14 years, they didn't even prepare us to make money. Yeah. <clears throat> for 14 years, they didn't even tell us it's a redlining system mm -hmm. where they already know, well, we can't judge you by race, but we can judge you by zip code. So vicariously, they're judging us by race. Because <laughs> demographics yield to certain zip codes. Let's be right. right. You feel what I'm saying? So, okay, you're not judging us by race, you're judging us by zip code. So, yeah, inadvertently judging us by race. And there's a whole system here that says you're going to be least likely to get the credit that you should be approved of as so long as you live in these specific right. places. You know, that's not taught in school. So how do you go out and do what? Like, when, if you don't get taught credit while you're in school, how can you survive in society even if you get a job? But they don't tell you this. When you go to get a job, you apply for a job, you sign, you apply for a job. If you don't know what to say to the purported employer, they pull your credit. And then what does that do to your credit? Cause, yo, I just went out there, I filled out 30 applications. Damn, bro, you in, you in hell right now. You in the grave, you in the ground right now. You bragging, you, yo, I, yo I, I ain't no slouch, I ain't lazy, you know? But we know cash is king and credit is queen. These is the pieces on the board. <clears throat> you feel what I'm saying? These are the pieces on the board. Well, they taught us in school how to play chess on a checkerboard. Yeah. <laughs> so people is like, they got their rook, they got their queen and all, but they on the wrong board. Yeah. Checkerboard. And they're proud. Mm -hmm. They're playing chess on a checkerboard, though. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So that's where the issue is at. Because if I don't know nothing about credit when I get out of school after 14 years, there ain't a job that's going to prepare me for the hell that I'm inevitably going to walk in. Especially if I don't have inherited wealth. Especially if I don't have the family house and the family business into play. Because inherited wealth is the only thing that can diffuse debt wealth. This is debt wealth society. Anything you actually need, you gotta go into debt for. If you need education, you're gonna go into debt student loan. You need a car, you're probably gonna get a car note. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you if you need schooling, like I said, it's gonna be debt. If you need a car, it's gonna be debt. If you need a house, you're gonna have a mortgage. So student loan, education, car, car note, another form of debt. House mortgage. Okay? So so guess what? And if I wanna build credit. I gotta go into debt in order to build the credit. Yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> so it's a debt society. Yeah. If I don't yeah. owe somebody some money, I ain't yeah. gonna be able to survive. Yeah, that's it. Unless that's cash can't. <laughs> you know yeah, like, that. I ain't getting approved for a new apartment, a new yeah. house, yeah. school, car. I got to owe someone something. Yeah. And then I gotta have good credit. So now I gotta say, what's the two best things that we're taught to build your credit? Get you a house or get you a car loan. Yeah. This is this yeah. is this this yeah. is the school we go through. Oh, you want to build your credit? Okay. So what you need is a house or a car. That that is definitely yeah. You. Credit cards. Yeah. Yeah. Credit cards is next. <laughs> if you don't know how to shuffle them damn credit cards, <laughs> you know, hey, I got proof for five thousand, but that don't mean you should spend twenty five hundred. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. by tradition, I tell people to be safe mm -hmm. and stay in fifteen percent range. Those yeah. twenty percent. Yeah. Stay stay fifteen percent. They give you five hundred. You spend more than seven fifty. Right. But then, I mean, people look at me like, hold I'm on, a survival for that. I, I get five thousand dollars. You mean to tell me the game is to not spend more than seven fifty? Yeah. That's like what kind of trickery? That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Cause they know what you're gonna do. They know you're gonna be good for one minute, and once you spend it once, you see. Now your philosophy comes in mm -hmm. because you walk around with cash on purpose yeah. to see what your barometer is for discipline. Exactly. Yeah. So by now you're on a whole other level. So the person who can't hold that cash in their hand, imagine when it's electronic. Because once you spend that electricity, you can't see. You see, you said, if I see the cash, mm -hmm. I knew yeah. I wanted to buy that $20,000 thing. Yeah. But now that I see the $20,000, yeah. yeah. I'm ready to negotiate. Yeah. 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 I see yeah. it. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. What happens when it's electric and you can't see, see it? it. Right. Oh. The electricity, you don't get to see it. You don't get to feel it the way you feel the cash going like this. You get you get Exactly. Well, the same reason they change the money into chips at the casinos. Uh, nice. Psychologically. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. He loses the value. Yeah, <laughs> loses the value. <clears throat> you know, this is plastic. Yeah, exactly. I'm playing the game. <laughs> it's just a game. It's just a game. And that's why in school yeah. they don't pull out registers. And when you go to the hospital, they don't pull out registers. When you pay for your drugs, everything is on these cards and everything mm -hmm. like that to mm -hmm. buy your drugs. Yeah. So who cares about that? No. Because if you realize it for the business it is, they like, I don't know about that drug. Hold tight. But if you, oh, you got your card? Oh, no, we're just going to give it to you. We're going to give you the drugs you need. It doesn't feel like a business because you don't see nobody pressing buttons for the cashier to roll out. Because right. if you had to, if you had to go through the cashier process when you go to the hospital, you start making a better investment on your life as far as the decisions mm -hmm. that they tell yeah. you to make. Yeah. Because yeah. we know the impact that cash has on us yeah. psychologically. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But if you got the Medicaid card, then mm -hmm. if they propose that you use something, you're like, well, at least I got it. Right. Yeah. And I mean, let's, let's not play with Western Union and them making you think they got to carry the money so we charging you. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So the further yeah. the wire, whatever that yeah. means, uh, but it's all electric, yeah. the further this wire go, the more money we're going to yeah. charge you. Like yeah. someone has to carry yeah. the bag yeah. of money. Right. You feel me? So this there's a lot of lies being perpetrated with this electricity. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, and that's why they call the money currency. You, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's all about our energy. So they don't have us locked up. Mm -hmm. On what? False charges. They charge it up. You know, mm -hmm. and you know, prison is almost synonymous in sound with a prison. So a prison is a mm -hmm. place where you store light. Right. <clears throat> and you know, the uh full spectrum light solidified is melody. Mm -hmm. We take all spectrum of light and we by as a melanin site. Mm -hmm. So we're light bodies. The darker you are, the lighter you are. So really, he's light skin, yeah. he's not dark yeah. skin. Yeah. Yeah. That's, just, mm -hmm. that's facts. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So he's, a, I mean, he's light skin. He's yeah. really light skin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a fact. Yeah. So he's a light skin man. Right. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so, you know, him being light skin, you feel me? Yeah. They would want to lock him up, imprison him, or mm -hmm. put him in a prison and drain his energy, and that's mm -hmm. why with this currency, because they don't pass laws anymore, they pass bills. You know, oh, uh, yeah, House Track Resolution yeah. 1933. Yeah, so, they lobby, right. they put up bread for you laws to make profit off of. So, mm -hmm. they don't pass laws no more, they pass bills, you know, since March 9, 1933. Some people ain't even caught that switch. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that switch, like, yeah, you pass so laws, pass bills. Yeah, you ain't you ever hear them talk about passing no more laws. Yeah, I know it's a bill. And the bills get turned to statutes, statutes get turned to codes. So, <clears throat> so now they pass laws. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, they pass bills. Bills of exchange. That's the money. It's about mm -hmm. draining your energy. So it's mm -hmm. about taking these light beams and putting them in this enclave or this this enclosed section. Mm -hmm. They call a prison, which is really a prison because they're locking in the light. Mm -hmm. And it's about draining the energy. So that currency comes into play, which is the money, and therefore they charge you for a crime, and then they put you in a cell, like a door cell. So like, mm -hmm. And you might get locked up for assault and battery. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, it's all clear. Yeah. Yo, these are bars, man. Yeah, like, bars. You gotta hear the rhyme scheme. Yeah, bars. You gotta hear the rhyme scheme. Bars. Yeah, bars. Yeah, bars. Yeah, bars. Yeah, bars. This is what battery. Battery. assault and battery locked you in a cell, charge yeah. you for a crime, mm -hmm. and then they ain't gonna do a, a plea bargain. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So we're gonna. You know what I'm saying? You at Bargain Bazaar right now. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna figure out how much we can get you out of the situation for. And if we know 9 out of 10 people accused of a crime in America is found guilty. Or, um, or say they're guilty, I should say. Mm -hmm. Nine out of ten people accused of a crime say, say they're, they're guilty. guilty. Yeah. So we know right. that. So someone mm -hmm. then convince you that it's mm -hmm. in your better interest mm -hmm. to plead guilty. <clears throat> when in right. fact the reality is, most times you fight for yourself, you get free any damn way. That's a mm -hmm. It's actually true. Yeah. It won't even go past the grand jury mm -hmm. because yeah. they are already skeptical. Yeah. <clears throat> but the name of the game psychologically is give you a bunch of counts. Why? The psychology behind it is this. If I accuse you of one thing, see how the government work when they want to create technology on people? Never accuse somebody of one thing because there's the benefit of doubt. Mm -hmm. If I accuse you of 10 things, even if I know eight of them is obsolete, <clears throat> but prosecution is going to be like, look, come up with everything. Mm -hmm. A lot of these charges are going to drop. But what we do know, we can bank on, mm -hmm. if I accuse you of 10 things, the average person is going to say, come on, you had to do two or three. <laughs> yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So when, when they, they'll never give you one count, mm -hmm. they'll turn one count into five. So on every two counts, it comes ten. And on every three counts, you feel what I'm saying, it becomes fifteen. Mm -hmm. 
You feel me? So now I got you for 15. Read it off. Okay, so we got him not guilty for this charge, not guilty for this charge, not guilty. Guilty on this charge, guilty on this charge, not guilty. But that's all the game. Because first of all, he was accused of one thing, really. Yeah. But they broke it up, made subsidiaries, knew a lot of this was fabrication and the judge was going to hear it anyway. But the reality is, if I accuse you of multiple things, the Irish person is going to say, come on, yeah, you suck. <clears throat> come on, how can you get accused yeah. of like 20 things and, and you you innocent? Right. Come on, you did one of the 20 things. Huh. That's yeah. how they think. Yeah. So this thing is all on the logic that we <clears throat> don't necessarily apply because guess who taught you logic? School. And we know how logical that is. Yeah. <clears throat> and the reason why we know schools are logical because they didn't teach us food, clothing, and shelter. So therefore they didn't prepare us to be adults. But we leave there in adulthood. We leave there <laughs> grown people who are supposed to be expected to run the world, run society, which is a lie. You feel what I'm saying? Because we're not going to run society if we don't know about credit. We're not going to run society if we don't know about deeding. Or more specifically said, title searching. Like, we don't know none of this stuff. Like, how we really, we're at the disposal of all the people who know better. So now we're going back to the old teachings of the 5% of the 10% and the 85%. You feel what I'm saying? And the 5% of deaf, dumb, and blind. You feel me? And, uh, oh, pardon me, the 5% are the the righteous teachers, the 10% is no, don't tell, and the 85% are deaf, dumb, and blind. Yeah. <clears throat> you feel me? But then we go to economics now, and we learn who the 5% are. The 5% are, they make up the part of the American nation that actually have wealth or disposable funds where they can invest. And it's said, if you understand, of course, the S&P index, that everybody's supposed to be able to invest at least one third of their income. Mm -hmm. Wealth begins at $150,000 a year, so you're supposed to be able to invest a third of your income being $50,000 a year without question. Meaning, when they say this, this means you're supposed to be able to lose all 50 k and your life still not affected. Mm -hmm. That's what investors are about. The risk. Well, yeah. Because now you don't got to worry about risk. What's the main thing stopping people from crossing that threshold? The scary element of what if I lose this money? This yeah. gonna, and it's going to take me a while to get it back. Mm -hmm. So wealth begins when you are able to lose fifty grand a year without feeling the sting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Those are the people making the money. Yeah. Okay, so any things you can start investing 50 grand or partition it or compartmentalize it, when you do come up, it comes up to be real good money. <clears throat> so much more than anything else that you lost, you still win, per all the money. Because chances mm -hmm. are, if you're investing X amount of that kind of cash, you're gonna get a good return. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just 30% or 20%, you're gonna milk that situation. So, wealth begins at $150,000 a year, and only 5% of Americans actually can are wealthy <clears throat> or can mm -hmm. invest one third of their income being fifty thousand wow. per hundred fifty thousand. So they say poverty begins for a family of four at thirty two thousand dollars a year. And for an individual at fifteen thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Fifteen and thirty two. <clears throat> now what is fifteen thousand dollars a year anyway? That's insane. Yeah, that's, 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 that's family of four is worse than one individual at fifteen thousand. Because <laughs> if we multiply the fifteen thousand by four, that should be sixty grand in that household. So why would you tell us for a family of four thirty-two thousand and for an individual at fifteen thousand? So we know there's some ambiguity going on with logic as far as the numbers right. is being crunched. But what we want to focus on is the fact that there's a hundred thousand plus dollar gray area till you get to a hundred and fifty grand land called the five percent. So when I talk mm -hmm. to the brothers, I'm telling you, you want to be part of the five percent nation, that means you want to be making hundred and fifty grand a year. Mm -hmm. But your income to expense ratio has to make sense because yeah. if you That's raise right. your expenses yeah. per year income, then you, you, you 150k means nothing. Yeah, means nothing. you live like a right average So now we got to figure out what's what's the income to expense ratio supposed to be in retrospect for 150 thousand dollars per the one third that you're supposed to be able to invest. So all those different things should have been taken into context when in school, so you can know how to behave as an adult. Yeah. Like that full cycle. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. As an adult, we supposed to be in that space. Now that society is fully operational, criminality is on an all-time low because everybody's a thinker. Right. Because <clears throat> right. we were trained right. to think. Mm -hmm. We were trained to understand that, okay, studying the S&P, it says to us, it's predicted that 20, 30 years from now, the ratio between what you earn and what the, the depth of money is, is about 6 to 10. 
<laughs> so, in other words, or I should say 10 to 6. So, in other words, if you're looking forward to a pension, because remember, they project for 20, 30 years. Why? Because that's when people retire. Because mm -hmm. people are supposed to work their life for years. The reason why they work their life for years is because the way the mortgage system is concerned, you're going to be a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. A lot of things are going to keep revolving around 30. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the reason why they want to do that is because the average person matures and gets set in a way to say, I at least want to get a house and settle down. In their 30s. 30s, yeah. So 30 years again. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because the lifetime expectancy is about 72 years old for us. So if I'm 35, the average rate that most people wow. start getting houses, yeah. mm -hmm. especially in our community, you you work, the house makes you work for 30 years mm -hmm. because it costs so much. So the house is your lock to get you to be an adult or responsible. Mm -hmm. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage, <clears throat> and you're going to retire hopefully in 30 years or more. Right. And every extra year after 30, they're going to make a few more concessions to you to keep you on the clock. So <laughs> if you are 35 years old and you retire 30 years down the line, it's suspected that you probably will be able to pay that mortgage. But we know they, get, they approved you on the loan that you couldn't afford in the first place. That's another, another conversation. Yeah. And you <clears throat> were unsuspecting because you just never had nothing in your name. And poor people think everything got to be in their name. Mm -hmm. While wealthy people, when you get to them, they don't own nothing. So that's why when you got a school, they got a file for a chapter of Because, <coughs> hey, I got to renegotiate my books. Yeah, trust. Yeah. I don't own nothing. Ain't nothing in there. Technically, I'm a poor man walking around yeah. right here. <coughs> you feel what I'm saying? So, like if, Trump. if yeah. I'm 35 years old and I'm supposed to retire about 30 years later, mm -hmm. which is 65 years old, then Especially about knowledge and trust and everything, my property's gonna go on probate. That's another conversation. The government gonna take everything I work hard for anyway, because I don't know how to protect or secure the asset. But 30 years old, <clears throat> 35 years old, I retire, I become 65. Now I'm 65, I got seven years before I die. Hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Seven years before I die. So I have seven years to myself. Hmm. Here's another thing <laughs> 30 years old, right? So the S&P does things in increments of 20 and 30 years old when they forecast money. Mm -hmm. So the forecast is 10 to 6. So if I'm looking forward to my $100,000 when I retire, because I should have about $100,000, because of hyperinflation and food inflation. Food inflation, they give you lesser and it costs more. So the bag of chips uh -huh. costs more than 25 cents, like when we came through. Yeah. And it's lesser chips in the bag. Right. Mm -hmm. Craft singles, cats is buying cheese to be 12 in a pack for mm -hmm. whatever amount of money. Now it's lesser, yeah. like it's eight. And they do it so gradual that by the time another generation grow up, they grew up with it being eight. They don't know nothing about the 12 and the two generations ain't talking about food inflation to know any better. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> less food costing more money, mm -hmm. that food inflation plus hyperinflation printing more money that then constitutes or warrants the potential of the masses. So the hyperinflation and the food inflation when we put that into respect, the 30 years out that you expect to receive your $100,000, according to S&P, is going to be worth $40,000 or $60,000. Mm -hmm. So you, you retire, and it will save $100,000, but it will be worth $60,000, because <clears throat> that's the ratio. Right. This tells us now, we, then that means the pension plan is all messed up now. Because yes, I'm gonna get the dollar amount they told me, but it's not gonna have the impact 30 years from now that it has now. <laughs> because I'm expecting to get 12 slices of cheese that I'm getting now, 30 years from now. But that's yeah, those 12 slices are gonna probably be down to five. Yeah, yeah. Six. <clears throat> yeah, real talk. But we on eight. Yeah, okay. You feel what I'm saying? And the bag of chips, the quarter waters don't even exist no more. We grew up yeah, with quarter waters. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Know. And chocolate pants, <laughs> 50 cent. Yeah. 50 cent sodas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's blue, there's purple, there's pink. <laughs> they don't even exist no more. <laughs> the 25 cent bag thing threw me off. Because I've been thinking it's 25 cent, but I changed my diet and all that. I ain't been eating a lot of that. But then one day I go to get a quarter bag of chips, and there's no such thing. No, no. I'm like, yo, what happened to the 25 cent bags? <laughs> my child was like, there ain't no quarter bags of chips now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they used to exist not too long ago. No, they didn't. They never exist. I'm like, this is the real nature. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, who was carrying 35 cents and 45 cents? Like, that was like odd. Like, we had a whole case quarter, we did that. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Done, right? It was done. We didn't need a quarter plus 10 cents plus two more pennies. So, this just shows you, like, you're not prepared. 
So now what this means is you're gonna have a bunch of people going to retirement and have to come out of retirement and take lesser jobs because the job's gonna hire lesser based on your old age. Okay, you only get the young gun. That's what they're gonna hire. So now they duped older people to have to be destined to a situation where now they gotta do what they call reverse mortgages and all sorts of tricky stuff. That's gonna buy them time for a year or two and then they'll be back in the gym. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is the conversation that in this one session right here, 14 years of school that ain't prepared you for. <clears throat> and I dropped out 10th grade. You feel what I'm saying? And the only reason I got interested in it because it became relevant in my life when my grandmother lost her house. And the health only became relevant because I met my mom when I turned 17, she died of me, got medical cancer and diabetes. So it just becomes relevant. So it becomes a stimulus to study or an impetus for my research because I don't want to be in those situations again where my grandmother spent 40 years at 9X, which I think turned into AT&T, but it was called 9X when she was working. Oh. And she owned the house as a black woman, which was very difficult, three-family house. That's what made it difficult, and it was a corner house. You know, houses on the corner is yeah. generally more money than the rest of the houses yeah. on the block. You know what I'm saying? Because you technically on two streets, instead of one. Yeah. <clears throat> you feel me? So, uh, real estate nuance. So now, how did I own that house over 20 years and then lose it because of a technicality? That was all my memories in there. I wound up homeless. She wound up losing her mind shortly thereafter. Because she put her life into that house to let her children, my uncles and aunts, my uncle and aunt, my father live there, and their children. So when she lost the house, she lost her mind. Father lost his job, suffered from alcoholism. My aunt and uncle, they did real good. You know, uh, my aunt working for dialysis and everything. <clears throat> they went out and moved where they moved. Michael and Michelle, and Michael, my sister Michelle, we wound up homeless. We had to figure our situation out. Mm. You know, my sister wound up in the feds, I wound up in prison. You know what I'm saying? We both come out. She wound up locked up and stabbing somebody and hustling. I was, you know, shooting somebody. So that's how this thing crumbles. There was no education, no knowledge, no resources in place for us to have a contingency plan or for the adults to have a contingency plan. We lost the home, we lost the whole family. So I remember this clear as day. And that was my life lesson that taught me better than any school. You feel me? Because when I went to school, every righteous man, every guidance counselor, and every teacher that told me, stay in school, can you give me the funds to sustain myself? So I had to go to school. <clears throat> Nobody else. I wanted to be good, but the brothers selling the bean pie in the newspaper, salute to them, they, they, they powerful brothers. He just can't give me a job to make bread. But what am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to shun the drug dealer and shun the prostitute, but they're realists. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I tell people, I'm like, I don't condone the behavior, mm -hmm. but I cannot be one to condemn the behavior as well. I don't condone it, and I don't condemn it, because if a person is lacking in resources and the educational tools thereof, and the members of their community that castigate them for what they do can't supplant the activity, at best give them something minimal to what they make in contrast to what they used to make, but something nonetheless that they can keep themselves alive. Yeah. Such opportunities didn't present to us. <clears throat> so, we in a conundrum. Why? Mm. Because the brother in the hood selling the drugs, he ain't shit because he's selling drugs to his people. The sister in the community mm. is righteous because she can sell cigarettes over the counter. Mm. You feel me? Yeah, Which right. has 400 poisons. And the, the thing that makes you addicted is the maple syrup and the plum juice that they put in it, which is the sugar. Yeah, you heard analogy, man. <laughs> you feel me? So she's selling cigarettes over the counter, and she writes But the drug dealer ain't shit because he's selling drugs to his people. But what about the sister selling cigarettes at home? Because that's legal. You feel what I'm saying? So I had to move from that. Just like you could be in New York, and you, you can have, you get locked up for having sex or consummating. Your, your marriage or relationship with a 17 year old. Where you go, Utah, they got a whole different law. No visas in the United States for marriage. Mm. Yeah. So then it's like your morality changed based on your jurisdiction, or yeah. do you have a morality? Do you have a culture that you make subscriptions to, or does your moral compass change based on how far you go away from one jurisdiction to the next? Mm -hmm. Now we come to find that we don't know what we think. Because now we start asking these questions, all right, man. Is this wrong that this takes place in New York? <coughs> oh yeah, he a pedophile. <laughs> is that person still a pedophile in Utah? Yeah. Now people don't even want to have a conversation. Because now they're they not used to knowing what they actually think. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now we tricky. Now everybody gotta watch what they say. I'm not even asking nobody at the table. <laughs> Cause it's real talk. They got us like on the hook. Yeah. You know, but that's why we learned life is like a sneaker store. You choose amongst the choices that has been chosen for you. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So you might think you're a Christian, Muslim, or Jew, but that might just be the only thing that was accessible for you to choose from. Is that an atheism? Yeah. So are you really what you think you were supposed to be or who you really are? Or did you just mm -hmm. choose from the choices that were put before you? It's just real talk. <clears throat> Doesn't mean you're wrong when you chose anyway. You, that's all you could do is choose from what you got available to you. Yeah. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? <clears throat> so now when you start thinking like this, it's like you gotta reevaluate life and just be like, man, what's really good? Like, what do I really think? What do I really feel? Multiple choice. It's multiple choice. <laughs> and that's what we did with religion and all of that. We yeah, chose A, B, C, or D. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Go back to the school, right back back to the school <laughs> thing, what you said. But to the school <laughs> thing, we brainwashed to think that way. Facts. It's crazy. Here's a question. Yeah. Somehow it's probably going to line up. Why do you use this phone? Right. I did ask him that too. He <laughs> 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 said it's hard to get. <laughs> nah, personally, personally, I use this phone because, you know what? In a world, hey yo, in a world full of suckers, really, yeah. you gotta stand out. Right, you gotta stand out yeah. because if in you a think world full of suckers, the world, the world is designed now. Yo, a, a female can't tell the difference between a real dude and a fake dude. So yeah. it's like, every if everybody got the iPhone or everybody got the Samsung, and and everybody's rocking the same clothes and everybody's yeah. wearing the same thing, how I'm gonna differentiate myself from the yeah. next man? Right. What's gonna make me stand out? Right. Everybody can, you know, everybody not um everybody can have this iPhone. Yeah. Even the brokest person <coughs> has an iPhone. Yeah. So I gotta when I walk in the club, I gotta stand out. If I walk in an environment, I have to stand out. Yeah. So this is a conversational piece for me. You know what I'm saying? I use this phone to, to, to create, you know, conversation with a yeah. young lady because she's gonna see it and That's be real uh, she's gonna be uh captivated by the the phone, you understand where coming from? So yeah. I try to do every little thing to stand out from the suckers. <laughs> right. Because they blend it in. <laughs> wow. The they blend it in. They, Yo, they, you they, say they some real high. stuff, Liquid. Yo, real brother, high. man. For real. They blend it in. These suckers are blending in. And they getting away. <laughs> they, they getting away with it. They getting away. That's they a fact. They getting away with it, man. So, and, Yo, and Liquid, women, be, uh, you a hood women, prophet, man. man. You a hood the prophet. Women, the women don't know the difference, man. Yeah. So so I got I to gotta, I gotta stand uh, out so way for her to know the difference when she see me she know i'm nothing like the rest right i'm not like the rest she could tell she could look at Man. me and see that i ain't nothing like the rest my skin glow different you know right. what's wild you know what I, mean? I, I love it too yeah, because yeah, yeah. <clears throat> when i seen it it caught my attention <clears throat> I asked yeah, 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 I asked yeah, yeah you see yeah. and now that's a fact that's and how now it it's a conversational piece and, right. this, and this is why you're going to spark a this is why this based right. on now that, watch this I can tap into whatever you do <clears throat> right and I can, oh, we can okay. build Right, and this, right. Is, we this is why that. I wear the gold damn shoes. Uh, yeah, oh, this is why I'm doing that, yeah. and you know, oh, yeah. because I didn't see those. <laughs> I didn't see those. Right yeah. there. Now, now let me show you. Now this is this that is gold. so wild. How we on the wave? Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm gonna tell you why we on the wave. Because what I learned mm -hmm. is, a, you know, you have to become the. You have to know you are the brand, yeah. right? Yeah. Not yeah. Oh, business is doing so good. Now I'm the brand. No, right. you're the brand from the time you born. Yeah, right. You've been branded from the time they gave you a name. Right. Mm -hmm. Birth certificate and all that. That's just a form of branding, just minus the burning. Go ahead. <clears throat> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So you've been branded from the time you came into this world. So, be that as it may, mm -hmm. this whole thing is about your marketability. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's what this life is about. Yeah. You know? And so our exchange is always a form of marketing. Why? Because our network is our net worth. And if mm -hmm. this is true, yeah. Then you are a brand. Because yes. if your network is your net worth, yes. then that means that you're supposed to be able to monetize every experience. And in law, we know that a friend is one who's willing to invest in you or one you're willing to invest in. Right. If you consider that, you have to get rid of a lot of numbers out your phone. Yeah. Because then we have to look at it and say, man, you know what? People will be having like 200 numbers in their phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you able to at least get $30 from them 200 people? At a call. Because if that be the case, everybody good money. Yeah. Yeah. But you will have to like so metal to get twenty dollars out of everybody that's in the phone, yeah. and that's why I don't need everybody that's in the phone. That's a yeah. conversation. Yeah. 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 So if your network is your network, yeah, and that means you don't necessarily have to get cash per person, yeah. but there has to be value in the relationship per person you interact with. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it don't suffice for you to be in a relationship with them in any form. 
That being the case, your network's your net worth and your branding, where do the gold shoes come in? Well, the gold shoes come in because mm -hmm. aesthetically your clothes are an extension okay. of your personality. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. person or persona means mask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is just this is what I want you to see when you see me. It's Constantly. not exactly who I right. am. Right. Right. <clears throat> so when I cater to certain demographics, I find that they receive you a certain way based on what you have on. Because your wardrobe mm -hmm. is just that. A wardrobe. Uh -huh. You feel me? We have yeah. war. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes militaristically, I may not want to look like the guy who knows, but the guy who, who blends in with the yeah. the environment so I can be well received. I may not want to have the afro to pick the dashiki and tons of shea butter. You yeah. might reject me yeah. before I even open my mouth. Right. Right. So, another part to the gold shoes, really, <clears throat> I'll sit courtside and it'd be like I'm the only guy with some damn gold shoes on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> not only yeah. are these shoes gold, but they're ostrich, right? Mm -hmm. Not only are they ostrich, to be more specific, they cost over $3,000. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right. When I'm amongst the elites, because normally that's what it is when you're yeah. in that square. That's one yeah. of the biggest builds in that yeah. circle. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm in that square circle. Go ahead. The only reason I sit courtside is not to watch a bunch of millionaires come play on, against each other. Yeah. But that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Come on, watch basketball. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Yeah. You're watching millionaires play yeah. amongst yeah. each other. Yeah. Poor yeah. people yeah. are watching yeah. millionaires yeah. make yeah. money. Yeah. 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 Now, I ain't a hater, yeah. but I got to start making that bread before I can appreciate them. Me. So the people who sitting there, they like, okay, we make this too. I can understand millionaires watching millionaires make money. Come on. It's just a little difficult when poor people need to spend that time studying. Right. <clears throat> so right. I then go, okay, bet. When I sit here now, they know even if I'm not wearing certain logos, this is people who spend in certain money, they know. If you spend right. money, you know a good suit, you know an yeah. expensive suit. Right. Yeah. They don't gotta have be no Gucci clothes. on it or anything. Right. <laughs> right. You feel right. me? Right. Like yeah. you know a right. good suit yeah. just by the way it's cut yeah. or the way it's designed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right. You, you about money, you in the realm of money, you know what it is. Right. So same way, whatever clothes I got on, yeah. I became less branded, less logo, some time a logo here mm -hmm. and there. Yeah. But it's by circumstance, because the, the shirt or the jacket gotta be so dope. Mm -hmm. I'm like, alright, I'll settle out. Cause before everything had to say across the chest and everything. Yeah. Now I'm like, <clears throat> okay, if you see the bedazzle on my back pockets, yeah. Then you know that I'm wearing Robins. You right. know what it is. If yeah. you in that right. world, right. 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 it speaks right. for itself because right. that's their signature. Right. So I'm like, I like the signature clothing. Right. So now if I'm sitting there, what it does for me is it speaks before I have to open my mouth. Mm -hmm. exactly. Because Denzel would be like, exactly. man, and this is how I met exactly. Denzel. Exactly. Yo, man, I walk back and forth <laughs> twice. <laughs> Yo, hold on. <clears throat> the guy in the gold shoes, man. Those is hot. <laughs> the second that he does that, yeah. I'm a business card. Yeah. I, I know. I, hey, what's up, brother? Yo, thanks a lot. I say to myself, do 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 do. He deals with acting. He's doing. He's a director. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm the author of ninety plus books. Yeah. You know, sure. that's how I open my conversation. Right. right. I deal with another person. You know, a motivational speaker and guru and all that. Court side. I go, okay. <clears throat> so, what do you do? They ask. Yeah. Oh. I do comparative studies of monotheistic religions and retrospects of them being influenced by cultures of antiquity. Mm. Depending on what you do, because <laughs> when someone asks you, what do you do, and you go, uh, you lost them. Yeah, so yeah, I made so, sure mm -hmm. I'll never say, uh, again, when yeah. someone asks me what I do. Right. Yeah. And I'm diverse, but you also learn, don't tell someone five different things you do either, mm -hmm. because then they'll forget all of them. Right. It's too right. much. I just met you. Which right. one do you do? Right. Yeah, and I also right. do music and I also do a little of this. Yeah, yeah. I right, hustle man. Yeah. You might as well open up your jacket. Yeah, yeah. You might as well open up Show them the five Rolexes. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? I got a ring. Everything you need. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you a lot of right now. You feel me? Whatever you need, I got it. If I can get it, I can go down the block. I don't need to be like that. So. I got this mental Rolodex where it's like, yeah. you know what, whatever category that you in, mm -hmm. my clothes a lot of times are conversational stars. Yeah. So yeah. while people in the conscious community, yeah. sometimes they get at me <clears throat> for my style, but they don't understand. Sometimes the equation mm -hmm. that is my style is put together with the intention to create conversation or yeah. instigate conversation amongst people that receive 
right. this data. Yeah. Right. So this for the right. conscious folk, right. this right. is data they don't even understand sometimes. They like, oh no, we don't wear that. We don't do this. That's the white man's, you know, so they got their talk and I understand, but I be telling you, I'm on a different wave, I don't even understand what I'm doing. Because when I get in certain circles, they're like, man, look, look how he put that together. You know, he put some effort into that situation. <clears throat> or oh, I've seen those before because I'm shopping where they shopping. So the conversation is like, oh, we at eye level. Right. When you sit in court side and them seats eight thousand, ten thousand dollars, and there's no security there because there's no secu- there's no need. Everybody over here doing the damn thing, and right. it's already secure. There ain't nobody going to do nothing crazy in that that square. That's the only time you're going to get a chance. One of the few occasions in this world where you get the opportunity to just walk up on people worth hundreds of millions of dollars on the strength because we looking at each other. At eye level. If you made it to court side and I'm court side, then yeah. we it is what it is. Right. I'm at the All Star game. Them seats is thirteen grand upward. To sit <clears throat> courtside like I was. Upward. Right. That's light. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you got in tune with it quicker. Because it's upward. You feel me? And I'm courtside at the All-Star game like yeah. this. Yeah. But while people are like, man, you put all that money into seats. But again, your network is your network. Well, you know, that conversation. Well, back. Yeah. That relationship. <clears throat> that brother with the gold shoes. Seeing him again a second time yeah. with another yeah. pick. Yeah. You see, what that does... It creates a familiarity mm-hmm. that if it don't breed contentions, which is familiarity breeds contentions in the hood. Mm. <laughs> but when you're not in the hood, familiarity generates revenue. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And then now watch what happens. So I got this billionaire in my back pocket, this billionaire in my back pocket, and several hundred million dollar dollars. You know, and guess what happens as we're friends and we build and we connect? I don't want to ask for bread. I introduce one to the other. And that becomes my network. Mm-hmm. Because the opportunities that's created thereof, you know, I get the broker fee. Mm-hmm. And that's just the love, whether it's signed or not. Mm-hmm. Or they go, yo, thank you for connecting me with this one. Let me connect you with this one. Right. You feel me? So I'll, I'll have my NBA friend. I'm like, okay, his net worth is like $80 million. Let me get him with someone whose net worth is in the $100 million. I have my $100 million friends. Okay, he up there. <clears throat> Let me connect him with this billionaire. He got his own hour. You know what I'm saying? So then after a while, who the hell is you? Who are you that's connecting everybody like that? Hmm. Then everybody want to connect me. You feel me? At some point, it makes me money. I don't know when yeah, or where, but just doing all that yeah. connecting. And then watch this. <clears throat> Too smart to be broke. And huh. the ability to materialize our conceptions. Here we go. <clears throat> all I got to do is be able to taste it or to touch it. Mm-hmm. So when I go to it, my man's house, my old Jewish friend, and he owns his own island. Yeah. And I get to go on his island, and Bill Gates is his neighbor on the next island. Like, you know, neighbors normally, like, they're in the apartment next door to me. Yeah, yeah. He's like, that's the island next door to my island. Yeah. That experience edifies me. It changes the way I see the world. And what was my limitations that I thought were infinite? Hmm. Transcend that. Transcend that. I find out I was finite. Because <clears throat> the whole time my house has been bent, my mind has been bent on get the house coming out of the apartment. <laughs> now I'm like, gotta get the hour. What the hell? Not like, by, I, I not never, by the block. <coughs> by the hour. <laughs> I never yeah, buy back the block. Yeah. I'm like, yo, buy a hour. It's not even yeah. buy it back. Mm-hmm. It was no one's in the first place. Right. Make it. Right. I'm like, yo, because then you ask questions. Yeah. So here it is somebody. The hood is building about whatever they're building about. But somewhere I'm in the world, on an island, talking to someone about how exactly to get an island. And my conversation is, oh, oh, they just make it from weeds and sand. So what happens is I give you the number for the people you got to call. <clears throat> you can even lease it. You don't have to have the whole set. You can get a real good island for two and a half million. But you can get started for such and such. I'm having this conversation. So I'm like, yo. What kind of conversation is this? Is, I was uh, going to get this on the court in the hood. Yeah. Unless it's a brother polite that came back and started playing ball and started yeah, kicking yeah, it. Yeah. So I'm like, man, those yeah. conversations mean more to me than anything. And this is why I was telling you early on the yeah. phone. I said, yo, I eat at places and people in the conscious community get at me and they say, man, why you eat at them expensive places? And I'm like, I eat there not because the food is expensive. That's what y'all thinking. I eat there because of the energy and the effort put into the food because it's energy. Because mm-hmm. if people know that the people I'm preparing this food for are kings, high end legislature, uh, the president, <clears throat> a high end celebrity clients, 
number one on the Billboard, sold over 10 million records so far in their career. Hmm. Better believe they got a culinary master in there who loves their work, takes pride in their work. It's art for them. And two, <clears throat> they're saying to themselves, this food is being prepared for great people. Not that they're good human beings, but people that are amazing. And it's yeah. my job to satisfy their convictions when it comes to this food. So the mm -hmm. effort put into the food, the energy is infused, and, and what's imbued into that food is the great will eat it. So I want to eat the food that is made under the pretense that who is being prepared for is great. Mm -hmm. As opposed to go to the chicken spot and they just dip the shit in the oil, give it to you to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe the energy is totally different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I believe it's different. Yeah, it's and I believe right. that's what I'm consuming. Right, right. So it's not right. just food because say word, our grandmothers could have cooked us poison, all sorts of chitlins and pig head and everything. I did it every New Year's. But the spirit that they put on. Yeah, yeah. Man, it was better than the alkaline food you could yeah. buy from the store. Yes, right. And it never yeah, killed yeah, us yeah, until yeah. we got wise. Then yeah. it just start playing a talk. Yeah. 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 You feel me? Yeah. But the love. It was like, you can eat one meal and be full, but if you went to the Chinese food store, you had to eat two or three of them yeah. joints. It was so good, yeah, I got a yeah, second yeah, one. It was so yeah. good, I got a third one. But when yeah. grandma made the food, I only needed one plate. Yeah. And I was right, because it was infused with love. <clears throat> so for me, with that same understanding, it's not about eating expensive food. I'm not looking at the price. And that's why a long time ago, I stopped looking at what everything costs. Yeah, yeah. I just decide I don't come out yeah. if it ain't right, right. in my pockets. You know what I mean? People be telling me, yo, how's that on the gas? How much that costs? I don't even know. I don't even know what gas yeah. prices are. Yeah, I don't give a damn. I don't know. Like, I got one car that's 150K and another car that's 350K. The combination of two is half a million dollars. If I'm still worried about gas, I need to get yeah. rid of cars. Yeah. That's a fact. Or service. So, you don't ask a man driving a Rolls Royce, what's the gas like? Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if he gives you an answer, it's a situation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so for me, I'm like the freedom of knowing if I go food shopping, I don't know what the food costs. Yeah. And I'm not saying now some people remember that's yeah, ignorant. But for my spirituality, the level I'm at is ignorant if I don't have a, enough bread yeah. and I got to budgetize. Then by mm -hmm. all do, you know, with all respect, <clears throat> budgetize. Yeah. But if you have enough, the next level is not to concern yourself with those things because spiritually it afflicts us. Right. It reminds us of the limitations and all that and stress when you yeah, see the prices right. so, oscillate right. So for me, I don't want to know what the grapes cost. I just want to know they got seeds like this is my priority <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, yeah, does the watermelon yeah. have black seeds in it yeah. or not? Yeah, that's yeah. my priority I'm not going to be concerned with which one costs what because then the compromise comes in. Let me get the yeah. seeds one Yeah, let me go ahead. That's a fact. I don't want to be bothered with that. So spiritually, when we only work hard to make this bread so we can actually make better decisions when it comes to our health and our destiny. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't want to know what gas prices are. So when people are like, yo, the price is just, I don't even know about that, fam. Don't even bring that kind of nonsense. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? If I, got, if I got bread on me, I know I should be able to pay gas no matter what it is. Yeah. I know that the machine is going to give me back my money if it goes over when I give it to the car, mm -hmm. when I put my card in. You feel me? That's, yeah. that's what I need to know. Yo, just put $100 on the tank. Your tank take 100 Nah, but you'll give me the difference. Yeah. I don't want to know how much really is taken. I don't want to know. It's stressful. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. It's stressful. Like the bills, yeah. if I can pay all my bills off throughout the year, if I got to negotiate with the phone company and everything, yo, let me pay this the whole year. Let me... I don't, I want to see about living, knowing, oh, okay, I paid all my, my rent for the whole year or whatever, mm -hmm. so I don't have a rent bill. I pay all my phone bill for the year, I don't have a phone bill. So now I'm walking around, not caring what gas is, not knowing what food costs, and not having no bills. So I'm walking free. Free. Mm -hmm. A burden. That's yeah. So good. Now my creativity, creativity is on high. Man, man, you walk away. Yeah. And now yeah. everywhere yeah. I go, I got to, well, let me, let me partition yeah. this because, you know, rent yeah. comes. I don't sure. have to think this way. In a, in a right state of mind, that's yeah. where we're supposed, we're supposed to be. To be. Yeah. You feel yeah. me? And now you can create because when you get ready to create, it costs to fund the idea. You don't want to be stressed. Okay, how I partition these funds with my idea? No, you good. Everything's knocked out. You solid. So as the ideas come through, I can just deal with it in Execute. real time. I don't have to put them on hold. Pending. I got this idea, but it's going to probably take six to eight months to get it off the ground. If I do it by myself, but I can get some other people to invest. Then I got to let them in on part of the sharing of this idea. It gets stressful. Because the people you talk to probably don't even aim with the wave in the first place to see what it really is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, this is about freedom. 
freedom of choice, freedom of decision. So that's why when I film you, I know they were saying, man, what kind of what kind of pants you got on? What kind of, what kind of, ball main, ball, ball main, main, right? Yeah, yeah. You feel me? What yeah. kind of kicks you got on? Uh, you know, red bottoms, man. Red yeah. bottoms. Man, man. So, Show it all, cash. So you know, <laughs> so you know, they need to move, man. I got some days we can talk, man. So I you got got to, I'm gonna feel a plane. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm ready to feel a plane too. I feel it. You know, I got a few of them. You know, I'm blue age. My the pants only close to 750. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and he drives the ghost. Yesterday, I had the jumper suit on yesterday. Oh, right, right. I did it the day before. It's light work. They ain't up on that yet, though. A lot of people ain't up on that yet. That's all right, sir. Yeah, yeah. Oh, G. Let another bag. Right. Yo, right. Right. So, this is this is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is what it is, man. Oh. Yeah, I'm good. Church. He's at top, of his, He's top of his game. He's on top of his game. People with a million in mind will only understand. I'm gonna I'm close out in like three minutes. It's about to die. Oh, don't worry. That's why we got this. No, we don't have that. Oh, you use it already? Oh, well, we about to stop anyway. We about to stop. <clears throat> yeah, we, 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 yo, we gave y'all some food tonight. We gave y'all some food. But you know, you know, uh, but they, again, they'll be like, man, that is European clothes. But again, we talking about aesthetics. We talking about conversation. Conversation extends far beyond your mouth. Yeah. When you get in certain ciphers, there's a certain engagement where it's like word. And then, and then other times, you know what? Branding wise, sometimes it is the fact that the effort that is made for you to get something at one point in your life, mm-hmm. and then at another point in your life, is effortless. Mm-hmm. That that conversation is like me walking into a Spanish store or a Spanish person coming in my store, and I say Bienvenido a la tienda. And they yeah. look at me and don't expect me to speak their language, and the excitement comes from it. Like, yo, you yeah. speak my language. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> they say, so how do I explain? Oh, like, oh, no, mm-hmm. I don't speak Spanish. I just know a little something. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Sister come by, and I go, your kid is contigo, told me be there. I want to be with you my whole life. Because no. I thought you don't yeah. speak Spanish. I got to keep that in my back pocket. Yeah. Right. People like you. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> then what that yeah. does, it yeah. creates yeah. This, this thing. Like, all right, so now we build it because yeah. I took the time out to peruse through something going That's on right. in your life. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like right. I respect you enough that I was able to deal with you at eye level, on right. a certain level, something you hold dear. Yeah. So, when you're dealing with this world, with people who's uh, about the art of things, and some people just in general just want to buy stuff because it's expensive, whatever they, whatever <laughs> yeah. their case right. is. Right. Yeah. The fact that you can look at me and then be like, yo, you know what? Son teach, but he, he with the shits, like he's rocking, you know, them, right. them right. pants he had on, 750. Right. Yeah. You yeah. feel me? And that was a light day for him. Right. He did a live stream to hang out and teach with those on. Right. <laughs> you That's know right. what I'm saying? That's right. light work. We ain't shooting no right. video. Nah, right. exactly. We just here. Yeah. <clears throat> this is in light room. work. Right. Right. It's <laughs> light work. You feel me? Right. Like I would have never imagined spending right. almost two hundred for hats. Yeah. But on, it, that's what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. And then guess what? Easy. This is a language being spoken yeah. to people who know what it is. They'll look at the hat. They look, oh, he got the hat to go with the shirt. He got the shirt to go with right. the pants. Got the, and yeah. then they go, okay, wow. Yo, P is on the same way. Mm-hmm. Automatically, brothers, because now guess what? You went in the store and you did this. Mm-hmm. You looked at everything. You sized it up. How does it look on me? You did it. You know I must have did it. Mm-hmm. You and I both connected like, yo, we love this brand here. We like mm-hmm. how it looks. Mm-hmm. We like the way. Yeah. Right. I, Defense mechanisms are broken down. It's like, you know what? I'm not here to hurt you or harm you. I'm not here to disagree with you. We have something in common here that we put effort into. That starts the conversation. Yeah. It's a good build. It's a good yeah. vibe. It's yeah. more than just, hey, we buy European clothes to do this. Nah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's our outlet to reach people before you open your mouth. Because everyone has reservations about who they're going to speak to just from what they see first. A woman look yeah. at you most time going to look at yeah. your feet first. Yeah. And she makes a determination about what kind of guy you are, whether we like it or not. Yeah. You know, a man going to look at her body and make his own reservations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the most thing we going to look at first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just true, because ain't nobody talk yet. So it's fair game. It's what I see first. Don't tell me I can't think based on what I see. Mm-hmm. I look at a sister, okay, based on her body type, she might have this type of attitude. She might right. be into these type of things. Based on her style, she didn't do the $10 store thing this particular occasion. Mm-hmm. She actually wearing the elite shit. Oh, mm-hmm. somebody's out of the cop in that for All of this goes on real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now when the real conversation quick. starts, yeah. 
this is where your mind gets blown, or it's just as I might have suspected. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, <laughs> but what made it so amazing was what you saw first. Right. And then the conversation mm -hmm. that's audible. Mm -hmm. But what you see first mm -hmm. is what makes the audible conversation everything. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because people have seen me on given days and be like, that's a bona fide nigga. Impression. He probably sell drugs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I get on my bill. Yeah. And they go, oh, oh man. But why they go, oh man? It's because I didn't look like I know. Because there's a look for a no. Go you ahead. feel what I'm saying? Go ahead, go ahead. So now you start building and it'd be like, whoa, the clothes did that. So sometimes I gotta dress in such a way. It look like I don't know. It look like I know a lot about something else. Yeah. And the more I look like I know a lot about something else, oh, yeah. the least likely you think I know about that which we should know. Mm -hmm. Then when you get that, now this person's comfortable because he's like, look, he's dressing like how we dress. But he got the knowledge. Mm -hmm. We can we can keep him in our corner because he's not a square. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's it's so much to it that people don't understand. Like I actually gotta invest in my ability to converse with people so they can receive me. But they don't get that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Come and on. in the process, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna pick what I like amongst yeah. those things to do my work. Yeah. That's what it mm. is. Yeah. You know, Real now talk. some people may be like, Well, why you can't just do that in the dashiki? That's your mission. That ain't mine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what that is. That's your mission. Real. I got my mission. You right. do it in the dashiki and the pick and the Shea Butter and be the only one in the room rocking out like that. Salute to you. You probably be the one that everybody be like, yo, he did it like that. That's not my vision. Right. <laughs> my vision is, yo, I'm going to drive the ghost. I'm going to push, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to push the IA. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to drive the slingshot. Yeah. Just pull up yeah. red carpet yeah. and these ground, these shoes hit the ground. Everybody yeah. going to be like, oh, shit, them ostriches. That's yeah. how that's going to work. Right. That's how it's going to work when I do it. And yeah. I'm going to put you in awe when I speak. And it's going to be about whatever we right. speak about, whether it's health, whether it's finance, That's whether it's really politics, tough. whether it's economics. Like, I sat here with OG, first time I'm listening yeah. to my brother Bill. Yeah. I didn't know what he knew. <laughs> <laughs> and all that is based on what you see first. Yeah. Okay. Bro. That was the brother. Like, you know, he got yeah. some gray hair. Yeah. yeah. You know, he yeah. can't keep up with us. Yeah. Then he pull up his feet. I'm like, oh, hold on. Hold on. Then I'm like, yo, what's going on? Okay, he got a, he got a Rolls Royce. I'm like, yo, who oh, no. So, so when that Rolls Royce pull up and he open the door and then them feet come out, you like, I'll be there. Yeah, I've been but, doing this for years, buddy. But, yeah, but then he dropped that nonsense. He got that Virginia slash New York vibe. Like, yeah. what is that about? Yeah. He don't yeah, speak yeah, as yeah. slow as the suckers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's, and he's like, he's a city slicker. Yeah. <laughs> so then it becomes more and more exciting yeah. before you even say anything. Yeah. That's the aesthetics behind clothing. Yeah. You feel me? And the disposition that we wear as black men because life is hard. Even when we smile and people think we scheming because yeah. we live so hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. we know a smile amongst each other, but the world out there think, yo, oh my God, he about to rob me. Like, you know what I'm saying? We think we look happy. People think, oh no, that, I know that look. I know that look. <laughs> you feel me? We look grimy as fuck, thinking we on our happiest day. Like actually, this is one of our better days. You know what I'm saying? But you know, the world served us so difficult, so much hardship that yeah. our face actually molded. We got an imprint from all the stress yeah, that yeah, we went yeah, through. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Talk, like you can look <laughs> yeah, at some brothers and Go no ahead. scars on their face, and you can look. Like I can yeah, look at y'all, yeah, and I can be like, "Yo, through, man, you've been through shit." Because <laughs> yeah, right. you got some people that's yeah. in the, and I can tell. Like, I'm not gonna say ain't been through nothing, but yeah. they don't got the wear and tear on their face. Right. Yeah, right. you know what right. I'm saying? Right. I know yeah, I got the wear and tear. I know you got the wear and tear. It's just a mold. Like you just look at a person's face and be like, "Yo." You went through man, hardships. You sent your off, can't yeah. even get it, man. <laughs> and, you, and you know, you know this agent orange. Yeah, man. And you sit in the room with people, and you can look at them and be like, you know what? I can tell, like, if, if we gonna start anything with some people, if we gonna go down the line. That's first, second, third, fourth, fifth person I'm gonna start with. If I had to start, that's how that. That's yeah. another conversation that takes place. <laughs> you feel the energy resonating from some people like uh, yeah, past. Like, we know son is on some shit. He ain't man how to talk. Right. It's just a vibe. So all of that is what people got to understand. It's all about aesthetics. It's the beauty and in, in beauty. You know? Mm -hmm. The beauty that, that, that conversation that takes place just from what you see. And mm -hmm. the only reason someone can really put you in awe is because of what you don't expect of them. That's what yeah. I realized. Right. So like when I went on the breakfast club, mm -hmm. I said, you know, I'm gonna come with the culture with my man's and I'm wearing my uniform that I designed, yeah. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? From the headdress to the shirts and the, to the logo. Yeah. People don't even realize, mm -hmm. but you know, they're uniform. So in that you see power. 
Yeah, and, it, and, and that it brings pride because you see uniformity that always makes people proud right. and with the headdress. But then me, they like. But then he's in the hip hop regalia or whatever they want to call it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm in the thousand dollar tie. Mm -hmm. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm in a fifteen hundred dollar shirt. Yeah. With the ties competing five hundred dollar difference, mm -hmm. only because the tips is gold. Come on. That say Versace, where you can't on, even see man. it unless you get a magnifying list. Well, who cares about that? Right. I know what it is. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that energy yeah. resonates. Right. You know, I know I'm shitting. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody that know when they screenshot that joint and they blow it up, mm -hmm. they're like, I know my man didn't just yeah. get a regular white button up tee. Right. I went in the store, saw that thing was 1500 Come plus on, tax. Right. But he did that. Yeah. And it didn't matter if people knew what it was or not. It's just, it's just the vibe. The vibe. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And the matching hat. And also, when I do that, it's like, okay, what is he really going to say? Mm -hmm. He probably going to say some rap shit. They waiting for me to spit 16. I know mm -hmm. what it is. Come on, no, man. No, Hawaii about to start cussing up a storm and, and rhyming and shit. Come on. And then yeah. when I start teaching, the reason why that, that video did millions of views yeah. is yeah. because what people didn't expect. Yeah. Come on, Joe. Because I didn't dress exactly. like you was going to expect me to teach. Mm -hmm. And that's why I had to do I got It's shock culture. That's how they, Come on. That's how they desynthesized us as a people. The way they murder us and put it on social media and leave it up. I say something about homosexuals, my shit get taken down. I show you somebody get murdered by the police, it stays up. We see the cold blood. What's, this, what's science behind that? So you gonna make sure we see us in our last breath gasping for air as we got murdered. You feel me? But just make a little political comment about something. Oh no, they, they blocked me for 10 days. I can't, I'm on yeah. Facebook prison. Facebook so, <clears throat> You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So when we look at that, we know what it is. And that's why it's shock culture. So I use the mm. same methodology. I employ it in the reverse. This is some reverse osmosis stuff where I'm like, okay, I know what it is. I'm going to shock y'all into culture. I'm going to show y'all mm -hmm. that what appears to be a nigga is the most brilliant thing on planet Earth. Right. You feel I me? Mean? This right. is where the minds right. come from. They're all coming out of the hood. So where everybody else is it. Uh, no, the culture is behind me. You know what I'm about because you can look at them. So now you're supposed to say, dude is a scientist. If you mm -hmm. ain't sleep, you supposed yeah, to say yeah, that yeah. man's a scientist. Yeah, he designed I, this in such a way. Come on. Because man. I understand if I can make you have no anticipation for what I say, you pay attention longer. If you anticipate I'm gonna come with the black man talk, <clears throat> then most of y'all gonna shut this yeah, thing yeah, down yeah, anyway. Yeah, right, right. I, I know how them niggas are that with them, them yeah. cookies or whatever that is. Yeah, I know yeah, how you yeah. gonna be. Right. So I know I'm gonna come jewelry out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna come on. with your thousand dollar tithe. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I invested in the opportunity to talk to my people who fucking ignorant. Yeah. Come on, I invested yeah. in the opportunity. Yeah. Come on. And I know yeah. I gotta look like I don't know. So when yeah. I let you know that, I know you can just wake up like, yo, blow your mind. Yeah. Your mind. <laughs> I know. I, you give me five minutes. Blow your mind. Oh, five minutes at any of the cipher. We lit. Well, you talking, you talking, because we wouldn't have been in the cipher if nobody, if somebody here wasn't lit, we wouldn't even been in the cipher. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Come on, man. Come on, man. Like, this is it. Like, this is this is three in the morning for some of y'all out there. Four in the morning for some of y'all out there. Yeah. Two in the morning for some of y'all out there. Yeah. And we lit, man. And we lit. <laughs> I, I love y'all, too, man. Thank y'all so much. If you're interested in the mentorship, you go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. Brother, P-O-L-I-G-H-T, 45 at gmail.com. That's pride, optimism, love, integrity, gallant, honesty, and trust. This is my brother right here, Liquid mm. Cash. Cheers, what it is and what it ain't. Your boy, mm. 510, born to win, chinky eyes, devilish grin. Look at, look yeah. at the knowledge, man. Look how we, <laughs> <laughs> look at the mind. He <laughs> yeah. never ceased to amaze. Yeah. Yo, where, where do we find you? Um, uh, family, make sure you purchase his joint right now when you get off his music. Yeah, because yeah. you know what? This is the mind that you want. To communicate to the people because he's in these type of circles okay. off top. they say he's jessica garcia said he's mad cool <laughs> <laughs> check me out man you pay to play.com you pay to play.com and check me out on instagram with the letter you the letter you 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 pay to play is the that number a, two no, okay that's the number two ask. check it out man you pay to play.com check me out liquid cash click the link in the bio and the and the Instagram, and you got it. And how you spell read. liquid on Instagram? L I K Q U I D C A S H. One more time. L I K Q U I D C A S H. It's your boy Liquid Cash, aka Money Mitch. Hide your bitch. Please. <laughs> <laughs> how we how we get up with you, brothers, oh, man. man? What we gotta do is there a website or anything we need to go to to connect with you. Right. I mean, you got a wealth of knowledge. We're gonna definitely be getting up and doing some work. Yeah. I'm not gonna allow you to leave here without us doing some work. I'm All gonna right. tell y'all. And uh, in just three three minutes, 
this brother blew my mind. Yeah. I know yeah. I'm doing the bulk of the talking, but I'm going <laughs> to keep it real with y'all. That this mm -hmm. black man right here, he, he he gave me a wealth of knowledge in just three minutes yeah. that had me sold. Yeah. And he blessed me with his publication. Yeah. You know, so I, I just got to salute him and thank him because the whole while, once he told me that he wrote that book, I yeah. already had to be there. I, I was thinking, I got to read his mind. Because yeah. that's what it is when we read books, we read minds. So yeah. I'm like, man, I got to employ the telepathy. I got to get that book so I can start reading my brother's mind. So yeah. I'm with it. Okay. It's okay. GabrielEBrown.com. <clears throat> You know your credit score, but do you know your wealth score? Mean. Say less. Yeah. And this yeah. is the brilliant brother, the messenger, the angel that brought this yes, brother sir. over. Yes, this is the dude. He's he's <laughs> solid and he's quiet, but those, those them people we talking about, <laughs> yo, leave, leave his ass alone. Yeah. Man. Yeah. You know, the hood definitely support my brother here, and that's why I'm so proud of my man. You know, I know him as Tank. You know, I'm proud of him because it's when people like him do what they're supposed to do that the brothers in the community fall in line. That's right. You know, so he puts them on to the knowledge. He showed them the videos. Yeah, He's the yeah. one. You know what I'm saying? He's buying opportunities. Facts. Home ownership get you in that home mm. fast to get you, mm. you know, get programs set up where you can maintain that and keep that. That's and my go against everything that's word. going on. You can find me, Harold R. Gray, on Facebook and Instagram. You can go to my website, HaroldBuysHousesCash.com. And you know we we provide them opportunities that everything my brother just spoke on. So that's right, you know, that's right. All love, you know, so. He doing a great job, man. All he love. he out here in Vegas just doing the knowledge, working on the real estate. We both gonna be heading back to LA in a few days. Yes, do what we do and then keep moving. But I gotta thank you, brother. This was a dope build. This was not yes, uh, uh, planned. This meeting was yeah, in envision. Yeah, yeah. It was like I get a text, yo, what you doing? Yo, you come through. I'm gonna be videotaping my man. Yeah. You know, uh, then we lit, we could do whatever after. And we stayed here, obviously, longer than we anticipated with the build yeah. because the spirit, we was building off of the camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had to build on camera, <laughs> off the camera, and back on the camera right, again. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that just shows you what life is like, man, when we yeah. get together and we on the right vibe. You know, mm -hmm. love, bro, polite. Thanks, family. I appreciate you. You teach, keep it going. Yeah, y'all got, this is actually what your cipher should be looking like. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? This is the build. Like, this, was, this wasn't orchestrated. We didn't put out a list. Yo, let's talk about this first. Let's bullet point this, talk about this second. We just built. Yeah, the freestyle. That's yeah, what it was, freestyle. and it was bars. It, He's definitely bars. spitting bars, bars, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Make sure you catch that first stream when he was breaking the knowledge of the, why he hold the liquid cash. Like, <laughs> like he, he set it off where everybody wants to start building. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, he had me excited, yeah. where I'm like, y'all want to share too. Like, he just, <laughs> he, yeah, he put something yeah, out there, man. Right. His brother is supreme in his thought and his wisdom, man. Please look it up. I'm glad y'all stayed up with us. Yeah. I wish I could build with you brothers. I'm in Vegas, gotta make it to LA. <laughs> appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Word. They love it, man. They show mad love. Alright, y'all, so I'm gonna check y'all. You know I hate saying bye. Love you all. They said I just went to Liquid Cash IG. <laughs> make sure you follow too. Don't just like the pics. Follow. Follow the brother. Let me check my site, man. Yeah, go go yeah, go go to that e. website. Com. Gabriel's yeah. website again. Look. Gabriel what is e. Gabriel's Brown. website again? Just so you know I ain't gas. Like, oh, okay. That's how they are. Yeah. Gabriel yeah. G A B R I E L E B R O W E N dot com. Yo, when I tell you he's the truth, you know I don't co-sign anybody like that because <laughs> you know I'm doing so much of the study, <clears throat> it'd be hard to be convinced by people. I heard it all. Right. Just like my man here, he know he's so deep in the study. He's heard it all. When I mean by heard it all, yeah. you know where people stop reading at page 45 of the book and mm -hmm. got hyped because they're like, nobody else knows this much, so I ain't even got to finish this book. I, right. I know when people stop at page 112. <clears throat> yeah. I know. You feel me? Yeah, and right. those of you that watch my streams, I've showed you my $10,000 book. Some books that I had spent 10 bands on. Facts. Right. Yeah. You know, just to master the algorithms of the market or whatever the case may be, you know, or, or the, the purported origins of Hebrew and all that other stuff. Like, right. We went there. We went there. So when someone knows, they know better. So when I say I've heard everything a million times, I realize today, oh, I ain't heard that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Come on, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend when I heard something. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to keep it real. Otherwise, right. you, you out of the know. That All means right. that right. My, my situation going to expire. <clears throat> what, I, what I learned, the more I learned, the less I know. 
You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's yeah. that's what I've learned. The more I learn, the less I know. Wow. Tomorrow, I'm going to bring like the system. That. I'm going to bring the system. Man, I'm here. Yeah. I got no choice. I, yeah. I really appreciate you. Because this yeah. is wealth. Like, you yeah. just brought me a bag. You brought me the bag. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, man. I appreciate Word. you, man. Word, brother. You brought you, the bag, man. Yeah. We yeah. All, we all brought the bag. We all we yeah. all got our way, man. Yeah, Look man. at this man. this brother here, man. We got to separate ourselves from the suckers. So, you know. Man, you have to, man. Yeah, man, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real versus the fake, man. And right now, the fake trying to, you know what I mean? They trying to take us out of the game, out of the game but we got to stay in. Yeah, we like yeah, LeBron yeah. in the fourth quarter. That's we a fact. You know what I mean? Closer. Yeah. That's a fact, man. Yeah. So, suckers is on the credit scores. Yeah. We on the wealth score now. Yeah, we on the wealth score. Suckers, suckers on the credit score right now. We on the wealth score. We on the wealth score. Come on, man. Y'all. Y'all get ready. Get ready. Yo, we all, they say we were main sucker free. It was close. It was close. We didn't even know we were straddling the fence. So y'all say he got us out of there, man. Yeah. We're going to do another 15 years. Yeah, sucker yeah. free thanks yeah. to this black man. Yeah. Word up, man. Yeah, great. Thank y'all, man. Y'all the best, yo. Salute. 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 Word up, man. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He laughing up a storm. Snapple facts.